So, hello, hello. Today we will talk about parametrization of experience and multiple models used in order to understand a little bit of this world. As you see, I'm a bit bloodied. My master friend who is a master of the saber uh, taught me a lesson. <laughs> so, parametrization of experience. Every time we have a scope of reality that is a potential that is actualized in Aristotelian framework by the way in which we act. So for example, a doctor is a family man, he has his hobbies, he has his reading interests, his entertainment, but also he's a medical professional. And at the time when he's performing surgery with all his knowledge and experience, he's activating the potential into actuality. And this personal framework of understanding is also parallel to everything we perceive in life, that is knowledge and experience. We take on various scopes of our understanding of the world and we model it through perspective, through tunnel realities, through aspecting it in this or another manner. So when someone has a large model, one large model, one scope and sees through this model, robust model, how the world functions, he's just projecting how the world functions. That is when you, well, you have multiple models and multiple perspectives and modular knowledge, episteme, from various disciplines, a bit like a general scientist, not a specialist, not an expert, then you can parameterize those observations about reality and the world in such a manner that you become very fluent at understanding certain aspects of the world. For example, if we take an abstract, one of the disciples of uh, Kozybski, a Japanese-American disciple, said that we abstract all the time. When we see a cow, we, a farmer sees a cow differently. Now a cook or a butcher sees a cow differently. It's a matter, substance matter, meat that is delivered by the waiter to the people at the restaurant. Now you can see the cow as a living animal, as something of the biosphere, as a mammal and all that, all that. Depending on the discipline, you see this simple object from different perspective and your understanding is different. Now the most adept people at understanding the world can scale through abstracts and illumine the abstracts from different aspects of understanding. And the whole lecture was brought by a dream I had about this network of parameters and how to understand the world. And I'm trying to convey it in the best possible manner that I may. So imagine that you have a flash of events in the Buddhist secret teachings. Your reality is just a flash of events co-arising, codependent in some manner. And we organize it in hermetic structures of categories. The first category is the mortal himself, our senses, our mind, our bodies, our natural limitations, our souls, our spirit, our feeling, cogitations. And then we move on to understanding this category of ourselves and categories that we create around the objective physical reality, the illusory reality, the consensual reality, and the absolute positive emptiness in Nagarjuna's world. So we move in between the understanding, in between the conceptual reality, something graspable, something real, physical, about the consensual reality, about the illusory aspect of reality, and about the void aspect of reality. And from this we may derive certain understandings. And uh, this is very important because we move on to cognitive switch. If we assume everything is an illusion or everything is a positive void, then that gives birth to nihilism if we have the wrong mindset. So it's all about the mindset and perspective, perception. If we choose to believe that the universe is a vast cosmic void when the physical forces operate, then that's okay. Physical objective reality. But if we move the perception switch a bit to the right and we see the numinous that the panentheistic whole is divine, we can also appreciate the metaphysical understanding of it all. 
Now, if we move into sociology of ignorance, for instance, there is something called nescientia, non-knowledge, that we are actually projecting what we don't know upon the world by uh, some certainty, some axioms, some knowledge. But it is finite. Human knowledge is finite. We may produce millions and millions of letters. A monkey typing on a typewriter may eventually produce a book. But still, it is a language that is finite. All models are, or may be wrong, but they are useful in one part of our being or another. So when we shuffle those models, we may understand the world much better. It is not given in to ultra-relativism or ultra-objectivism of a sort. It just means that we try to approximate the truth by moving on the waves of it, by looking at it from different points and perspectives, because we are inherently bound to look at it from perspectives and points that are never covering the whole objective truth. In the Gnostic uh, texts, there is something called the testimony of Adam, that the truth, objective truth, is on the mountain of truth, unavailable to mortals, when it is guarded by the angels. In Parmenidian doxology, it is said that people, mortals, have only opinions about divinities. It doesn't deny the existence of divinities, but these are mere doxas, doxology, opinions. So where, where does it lead to? It leads to an exercise when you try to, at a given moment, understand what scope of your experience and what scope of your knowledge and what scope of your perception is operating. Right now I'm looking at the dream catcher, right, the associations Navajo, for example, and it's an object that is quite splendidly woven. Now I change my perspective and scope, perspective and scope, and I think, huh, I may try to link my mental faculties and my astral faculties to it in order to, for this dream catcher to be somehow connected with my mind, the spider's web, and uh, perhaps collect dreams. You never know. Or I may choose a materialistic or naive realistic view that, oh well, this is an object that some believed, da 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 da, a belief system, and so on and so on. Uh, from an artisan level, I may add. I may adore its aesthetics. That's just one example. Thinking about politics, thinking about society, ideology, religion, comparative religions, uh, systems of beliefs, metaphysics, theology, theurgy, science, arts, crafts, technology, all those wonderful disciplines that humans developed and the real capital is knowledge, skills, experience and ethos, arete of human beings. We may try to move through it and uh, in our mental experiments or in our daily lives or take a note of that if you are more about organizing things in notes. Just as an idea, what is the perspective, what is the knowledge, what is the experience, what is the episteme within the current scope? How do you enlarge in your scope? How do you change those scopes of windows of understandings? Now that's something to think about, right? Thank you.